Hello everyone. How are you? Um, it's so exciting to be on here at night. Usually I'm on during the morning. So I'm on just a minute early because I wanted to make sure that everything was working okay. So that is why I'm hopping on. Um, if you're on, make sure you say hello to me. Let me know you can hear me okay. And as soon as Fiona pops on, we will we will get going. So hello, hello. All right. So this is so exciting tonight that we get to talk to Fiona. Yay! And it is actually morning there. It's Wednesday morning. So she's just starting as we're just ending. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. All right. How's everyone doing tonight? Good, good. We are just going to let everybody get on here for a minute and go ahead and wait for Fiona pop on. So, um,. Hello. Hello, hello. Our wait is up. Here we are. Hey, everyone. Hello, hello, Safira. It is time. <laughs> Amber. I, yes, I just want to hop on beforehand and just make sure everything was status quo. We're good. We're good. All systems go. So yeah, we're just waiting for a couple people to get on here, get going. Hello. And everybody can hear me fine, I'm assuming. Yes, let me know. We are going to have a good time tonight. And um, also, I have a little cardamancer tidbit too I get to share with everyone so once we get a couple more people on we will go ahead and I'll let you know what that is and we are it's a good week too we have so much like we have the full moon the lunar eclipse energy so this is awesome yes all right Pamela thank you fantastic you're such good helpers I appreciate it. Yay. It is like really, it's dark out obviously, but I still hear birds outside. That's the best thing about summer. The birds want to hang out too. Yes, very zippy energy. It has been like that. It's just like I don't know, like, so like you just feel like that building up, right, of that moon, and it's just like, whoo, very exciting. Good stuff. It's a good way to start the summer, I think. Just let go of everything that you don't need and just start moving forward, right? I like it. All right. So we're just waiting. Also, too, if you guys are um, want to go ahead, you know, share this too. You can go ahead and share this. Let people know that um, we are on. I'm trying to see, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can definitely. You can share it. Get some more people on here to come say hello. There will be a recording of this too. So once we're all finished with it, upload it to IGTV and then you can watch the replay as well. So for anyone that hops in late or anything like that, we can certainly do that. Which is always helpful. Hello, hello, hello. All right, awesome. Yay. So how many of you um, have Fiona's um, Oracle deck? It's actually, it's a beautiful deck. Um, I'm not sure, I do have it right here actually. So the artist, I don't know who the artist is, um, but it is really, really pretty, really pretty. 
Um, if you don't have it, this is it. Hey, Pam. I'm just waiting here. Um, but yeah, it's a really gorgeous um, Oracle deck. I, I used it a couple weeks ago and um, it's just really, it's really pretty. I know, me too. Me too. Yeah, it's really pretty. And it's very like, it's kind of like shadowy, you know? It's like a shadowy kind of like the images in it and stuff. So I'm hoping we'll do some readings tonight. We'll see, we'll see. Oh, wow, yeah. But it is, there's a back of them and it has a key on it. I love keys, so anything that has keys on it, I'm like, I'm here for this. Very cool. Love it. And then I have her book here, too, which has so much, so much information in it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it is. It's really pretty. Thank you. I have like one of those waiver things and it's ginormous. And sometimes I get brave and use it. <laughs> All right. I love that. All right. So Amber, um, do you want to maybe send her a message and just make sure she knows to um, come on to the live so I can add her? Yeah, uh, yeah, I certainly can. I'm going to in a second. Yes. Yeah, if Amber, if you could do that. I know. I wish like, she didn't wear sleep or something. Yes, we'll pull a card. And I'm going to read from the guidebook too, because I love the descriptions that she has in here. So we will. We'll do that. How about we pull in for like this full moon, right? Thank you. All right. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, we have Maximus. How can you feed how can you feed others when your own table is empty? <gasps> Look at that. Yeah. So you have to release. It is a weird day. I know. This day has been just like wacko. So yeah, this is just talking about self-care and taking care of yourself. So I feel like with the, the moon. Um, coming up with this eclipse, it's such a big, it's like supercharged moon. It's all about releasing because you can't hold on to all this stuff and then try to help other people with their problems if you're burdened, right? So that's what we're getting. That's let it go. And I'm not going to sing for you, but we are all thinking about Elsa right now. See that? That is the power of Disney branding. We need to learn how to do that. But let's see what this one is. Um, let's see what she has on here. Maximus. You are maxed out and yet conversely, more is needed. More nourishment for yourself. You are spread too thin and your life force is draining. All right, well, we don't wanna do that. So a new idea is being cultivated or, or perhaps it's time to stop sitting on an idea that you've had for some time. The moths are starting to gather. As lovely as they are, they will slowly blot out your light. So I like that. Let's, <laughs> yes, you can quote me totally. Um, so I kind of like that too, because she's like, she's talking about just like, you know, the moths are just hanging around there. So with that, I feel like it's like, moving stuff out of the way, right? Like moving those moths out of the way. Maybe there's some, you know, some things hanging out in the shadowy spots and it's time to release and clear them. So I think that would be really awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right. We'll see, we'll give a couple minutes and see what's going on. So yeah, there we go. So does anybody have like any like full moon like 
are they are you doing like a special ritual are you just gonna pull some cards what are you guys gonna do for the for the moon I don't know yet. I haven't decided I just have to get through this day's been really wacky so I'm just trying to get through this day and then we'll then we'll think about it tomorrow's actually my son's 21st birthday my second son so that's a big one and it doesn't seem possible. It just doesn't. All right. And no, guys, let's see. What else can we... Let me show you her book. We might as well talk about it, right? I actually have marked some spots off. It's heavy. Like, this is a solid... Here's the front of it. This is a very solid book. Um... Oh, there he is. I see. Hi, Jen. Okay. We made contact. Um, let's see. I love to make full moon water and bless my favorite tree friend with it. Oh, I love that. Yes. I will do that too, and I'll water my plants a lot with it too. Um, oh, okay. Um, Amber, can you help her out? She's not sure what to do. So just, um, just let her know. She just needs to hop on the live and then I'll add her. So that's what I'll do. Cause she just popped on and I don't want to lose everybody here. So thank you. So yes, we're getting there. I'm there. Yay. Oh, I love that though. I got to make, I have to do that. I have to, um, get my water ready. I do like to do that for sure. Um, I definitely, I do that. I'll water my plants with it. Um, and I also like to put it, um, in my diffuser and use that as the water for my diffuser. So <laughs> yeah, right. You should, but what, who knows what they'll start doing, right? I know they have magical eggs, Pam. Yes. You need to do that. And I wish you can send them to me. That might be really hard to do though. Then you'll have magical eggs. Totally make moon water and do that. Absolutely. And then you have magic eggs. I mean, who doesn't want magic eggs? They're already magical because they're all like different colors. So that's awesome. <laughs> it's a deal. You need to do it. It needs to happen. Oh gosh. All right. I love it. That's, that's pretty cool. Then you can tell your boyfriend you're eating magical eggs right now and that's it. And then he has to listen to whatever you say. <laughs> we can try, right? <laughs> oh, yes. So I think Amber is just getting her situated here to join. I wonder if I can invite her. Hmm. Let's see. I never like to like push so many buttons on here because then who knows what will happen. And that'll be that. So once we get um, her on here, there we go. Can you? Let me see. Okay, she's trying. All right. I'm going to see if I can. There you go. All right. So I just, I sent it to her. Oh, update her phone. Okay. I just sent it to her from me, from myself. So maybe that'll work. We'll see. We'll see. All right. That's true too, she, if you have to update it. Cause Instagram always has to do that. I was freaking out the other day cause I lost like the carousel option. And I went to go make like a carousel post with the swiping of the pictures and it was gone. And I was like, what is this? Like they don't tell you and it's you open it and everything's different. And it's, it's so frustrating because you're like, I need to get on here quick and do this. And now everything's moved around, but I figured it out. I actually was very proud of myself. So it was pretty cool, but yeah. All right, let's see. All right, okay, we got a thumbs up. 
thumbs up. All right. That is promising. Good, good. There she is. All right. Hey, girl. Hey. All right. I am going to, there we go. Go look. There. Let's see. Get on to you. I don't know why it was not connecting me, but I'm here. I'm sorry. You are that. here. <laughs> Yay, welcome. Thank welcome, you. Welcome. No, Instagram, Instagram has been really weird lately too. So I that's why I even went on a little early because I wanted to make sure it was even working right. So yeah. it's all good. It's all good. Right. You are here. I am here. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> good. I really appreciate you coming on to hang out with us for a little bit tonight. Um, so I'm going to just introduce you real quick and then we will get to it. Um, my name is Jen. I'm here from the Cardamancer, and we have Fiona Horn, and she is um, she's a little bit of everything. So I'm gonna actually just read her bio because it's just way easier because I can't even remember all the things that you do. So Fiona Horn launched her career in the entertainment in industry as a lead singer of the number one Aussie '90s electro rock band Death FX. Before continuing good, good on. Job. Death FX. Death effects. Okay. Uh, <laughs> to author several best-selling books on modern witchcrafts. She's a popular radio and television personality appearing on many programs around the world. She's now also a commercial pilot, public speaker, humanitarian aid worker, world records holding skydiver, professional fire dancer, yoga instructor, free diver, and of course, always a witch, right? So yes, we are here today. Um, to talk about her book, Teen Magic, um, Witchcraft for a New Generation, um, which is actually a rewrite, right? You actually had released this quite a while ago. And now oh, just... it's, it's completely different. It, um, I mean, it, that's what my publishers said. They said, oh, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea to reissue that book you wrote for teenagers and young people like 17 years ago. And you could just do a like a bit of a you know tighten up around the edges and yeah it was like it became a completely pretty much a new book so wow. so many uh issues important to to young people were similar you know finding your identity in the world let alone as a witch just even as an individual you know the common themes of, of growing into being human you know being an adult um so obviously those sorts of things were addressed there but uh Social media didn't exist. Nothing, none of it did when that book first right. came out. And, and smartphones were like blackberries, you know. And it's just, <laughs> right. you know, selfies had never been invented or heard of or even described. So it was just uh, such a journey to rewrite the book and also to address some of the issues that are even more um, pressing in teens' lives now, which is the way they are um, treated as a, a, you know, a consumer market. Teens have more you know in many ways more independence uh to make choices now than ever before because of the internet because of access to choice um and they're targeted for that so it was how how to sort of offer something that was um you know in in a magical sense but also a practical sense offering tools for for young people whether they identify as teen witches or baby witches um you know useful tools for them to navigate this current you know living landscape and also um i realized as i was writing it it's i was writing it for the parents and the caretakers and the the um the the people who guide uh young people now younger mm -hmm. people now yeah and, um, and then even the book sort of became a touchstone for someone like me who's been on the path consciously and, and deliberately for over 30 years and revisiting a lot of the foundational principles of um of my craft and, and then also sort of considering the people I've been privileged to cross paths with as we walk our parallel magical paths in the world right. and, and write things that might address all of our kind of thoughts and ideas of like, well, uh, you know, what am I taking for granted in my practice? What could I revisit? How could I grow and evolve? Um, and so a lot of the book even has aspects of that in it, you right. know, yeah, um, yeah. So it's a bit of a touchstone for all of us, maybe. I, I, I mean, that, and certainly yep. now the book's been out for a little while in the US, in the UK, mm -hmm. in Australia, and and uh, you know, North and South Hemisphere um, environments. And 
that's the kind of feedback I'm getting. It's coming from all sec sections of our right. magical community, you know. No, I love that. I love that. And it's so true because it's always good to go back to the basics, you know. Mm, yes. And, you know, like you said, and when you've been on your path for so long, you're changing too. And even just the, the way you, you see the basics can change, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. And, I, and I really think that's, that's so important to do that, to go back to that and really – um, to revisit the foundations, yeah. Yeah. And, just... and another big thing that changed, um, I thought of too, I've just realised I've got a copy of the book here. That's what we're talking about, if anyone's wondering. <laughs> yes, yes, we have mine. Um, <laughs> and it's beautifully designed, like it's the, the publishers did a really lovely job with oh, it's how it's so pretty. You know, put together. It's just, I mean, some of the, you know, just, uh, I'll just look here, the, let me see if I can find a bigger image for our little Insta screen, but yeah. Um, yeah, there's just lots of really beautiful, beautiful things that they've done. Like even just illustrations that look like that, yeah. you know, just, you know, and, and the alternating page colours and that. So it's yeah, a beautiful, tactile kind of yummy thing as well as, you know, I'm grateful that the content is, is being deemed useful and appropriate. One of the things that's changed a lot, uh, I think, since I first created, you know, the, the foundation of this book um, is the gender identity issues with young people right. now. And um, that wasn't uh, discussed. It wasn't made available. It wasn't addressed to the, the back then to the degree it is no, now. And certainly in modern witchcraft, you know, there are lots of things that we would consider specifically feminine and masculine. And But always, you know, in all my earlier books, you know, my first book that was published over 25 years ago, is that right? Um, 30 years oh. ago, I can't remember. I'm, I lose That's track amazing. <laughs> Uh, it was a little while ago. That's first it. Book was published. Yeah, Witcher yeah. Personal Journey was published in 1998, and actually the the 20th anniversary edition of Witcher Magical uh, Journey has been published internationally. So it's over 20 years. Yeah. Oh, um, but so uh, awesome. you know, we were, we always sort of said that you know it's not the ma the principles, let's say, of divinity, masculine and feminine divinity, and how we might identify with them as witches. Um, is not gender specific. We always said that it was not gender specific. Right. And now even more so when you have neutral um, gender um, or no gender, you know, um, how do we as witches recognize that in a spiritual divine way? And how do we uh, practice our craft? And, and uh, when, when so much of what we do is based on the fertility idea of procreation, so yeah. that's how, you know, the human species experiences the masculine, the blade, and the chalice, we know they are kind of sort of gender specific. Yeah, they, and they are. And those images and symbols are, are through our whole, uh, you know, varying, in various ways, they, they come in and out of our ritual and our, and our work. Um, but at the same time, I love that witchcraft is evolving to uh, expand beyond even that, you know, and that's what's exciting about our... Um, our craft, it, it, as, I, as I wrote 25, 20 years ago, and I'm still saying it now, um, which is our, our answering the questions the world is asking today. Like our spiritual path yeah. is providing those, those answers or even at, at least a, a framework to explore those, those answers in for each individual witch. And um, I think that makes us very relevant. So, so bringing it back to writing this book, um, recreating this book, pretty much rewriting it completely, um, it was wonderful to just address all that and have a, an opportunity to contemplate how our magical community has evolved. Yeah, and, no, um, definitely. And I think it's really, it's bigger than ever. I mean, good old TikTok, uh, another platform, you know, I t right. dipped my toes into that the other, yeah. the other month and <laughs> that was extraordinary. That's just next level. Another it really is. It, oh, you for can get lost. For worse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> better and for worse. Oh my god, it's it is so funny. Like I don't know, I, I you know I just recently kind of got on there as well, and I'm you know just kind of doing my thing. I'm I'm not fully dancing or anything. I'm probably yeah. not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, but, it really you know, becomes all consuming. It's almost it like does. you you know when I've I've talked to other TikTok, uh, I guess witch talk people, um, they you know they say that it is it becomes your entire life. Like it's yeah just, it's. It's not something that you can do a little bit. The, the way the algorithms work with that too is the more you're online, the more presence right. you have, the more, and you know, and you can see it's all, it really does create like a virtual reality of existence. Um, and it and never that's stops. interesting to contemplate. Yeah, it never stops. It's just all the mm -hmm. time. And um, 
and there's some really beautiful, amazing, wonderful, incredible things in there, and also some really pretty, uh, uh, interesting, willfully, willfully destructive, and 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 uh, that's that's interesting because it, um, you know, you I guess at the end of the day, every individual has the the you know ideally would have the right and the choice to practice their craft how they choose, and if they are you know letting TikTok create the parameters of their existence and function within that as a witch that's their business however i personally don't find that it i don't feel my most witchy self on tiktok i feel my most it's very witchy self when i'm actually physically out in nature um and you know whether that's honoring the earth honoring the ocean um, just being great performing rituals of gratitude or whether it's you know specifically doing sigil magic that's a little bit more technical um I still just enjoy doing it outside much more than doing yes. it on my phone, you know? Oh gosh, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that hundred percent. And I think, you know, and that's what I love about your book as well is because, you know, just even talking specifically to like, you know, the TikTok witches, you know, there's a lot on there that I'm watching and I'm just like, and you know, to each their own, like you said, you know, but you're just like, whoa, um, no, maybe not, don't do that, you know? And and with this book, I mean, this is a heavy book. Like, this is heavy. There's a it lot of information in yeah. here. <laughs> I'm like, but whoa. there's a whole chapter about magical social media. And, yeah, you know, yes. and I don't even as, as specifically direct it to TikTok then. TikTok exploded as this book was published. This book, yeah. I was lucky to finish the edit of it. And then it was actually at the printers and on the stands within six months. You know, my publishers wow. just wrote, you know, put themselves into pretzels to get it out there. So it talks about COVID. It talks yeah. about lockdown. It talks about social media right now. But I personally hadn't dipped my toe in TikTok at that point. And yeah. I think I would have probably put some other stuff in it. But the magical social media chapter does definitely address how to make your social media practices healthy and the most magical they can be. Um, okay. in this extraordinary virtual world, um, which yeah, increasingly yeah. is, uh, you know, becoming a, a monopoly on us, you know, like on our, uh, if that's the right way of putting it. But uh, I, I increasingly, as, a, as an eclectic, and I say in, in my book, Art of Witch, which was my, I guess, manifesto that was published in 2019 as a practicing witch of over 30 years, deliberately practicing. Well, I think I was right. born a witch, to be honest, but I, I, where I could actually consciously and deliberately practice it and, and, and explore the path and, and commit to evolving along this physical life journey as a witch. Um, I just, uh, you know, I, what was I going to say? I was going to say something then. I, got, I went off on a, on a tangent. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, just in, in Art of Witch, that book, I was um, talking about, uh well, just what it is to be a, a, a practicing witch. And I, I identify this right as an eclectic anarchic witch, which is, you know, I'd even say straight edge. I'm sober. In a, I've been sober in a program for nine years. The sobriety of it kind of, as I experienced yeah. from, from all external substances. Um, Congratulations on that. And everything. I have a lot of respect for people who practice with plant medicine and, and various other things, but it's just not my path. Um, yeah. I identify as an eclectic anarchic witch and I don't find in social media that there's much freedom in there anymore. It's all getting shaped and manipulated and driven it by is. algorithms and, you know, what you see is kind of determined by this AI, this artificial intelligence. It's Right. You feel, you get you get duped into thinking you're really free and you, you've got a lot of expression. However, the, the, the control around it is really insidious and I, I'm more feeling that it's more an authentic expression of my life as a as a free witch to remove myself from these environments and actually go yeah. off grid, um, off the matrix, off AI's control of me as much as I can uh, yeah, definitely. manifest that and uh, get back to the, to the, the raw roots of my practice. Um, right. And just and be clear. Uh, yeah. And that's, you um, know? yeah, a lot of us, I think are, are recognizing that, um, yeah, I just, you know, I, uh, and my heart and soul um, is is anchored in a sense of, you know, the witch is, is free. And right. uh, it's funny, right. actually, like um, the free to determine his, her, they uh, expression of self and craft, you know, um, that's that is what we should really fiercely try to protect, you know, our freedoms. Yeah, um, but also, too, I, I 
I've been writing, I, I do music again a lot now. And there's a band called Sea Witch that I've created with my partner, Dave, and all mm -hmm. the lyrics are from my book of shadows. And we're oh, that's awesome. out of the studio last night, um, or whenever it was my time perception <laughs> of linear times have been out of whack right now. Um, we're in studio and just, you know, just I'm realizing as I'm, we're now at the mixing, you know, kind of stage of the songs, the album's going to come out on Samhain, uh, based on Northern Hemisphere Samhain on 31st oh, October. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, that's when the album comes out. There's an EP yeah. before then. There's a whole lot of other stuff going on. See which yeah. the band, everyone. Uh, that's our <laughs> right. tag. Um, yes, I, I did look band. you. I did look <laughs> it up on. Um, I was. I think I was on your Facebook page, and um, I was. I was watching the video for Inspire. Okay. And, oh, oh yeah. you mean initiate? Was it initiate? In, oh, initiate. That's what it initiate, was. Yeah. Yeah. And the first you thing I noticed were your pants because they were awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, well, the thing with the thing with the Sea Witch thing, band is like a lot of the lyrics in Sea Witch are actually from this book because a lot of the stuff in here is from my personal book of shadows. So oh, you know, I'm so writing. Cool. I'm keeping my witch's journal book of shadows record at the same time. I've written 14 books now. It's it all entwined and then yeah. lyrically it's coming through and uh, you know it's even just, just the flow the songs down and listening to them and you know just going wow okay this is really expressing in music uh in this heavy rock band i'm doing um my craft again my practice again you know and, and the found a core foundation is free freedom yeah. free to be yeah. authentic free to make choices free sovereignty over my physical form um <laughs> these things that are as as witches anchored in our reverence for the natural world whatever craft we practice you don't have to be a green witch black witch white witch gray witch anything witch rainbow witch it's like right we we, re we revere this sacred natural world we'd have we have to air earth fire and water it's on our altars like it is you know it's, it's all around it's, us <laughs> it's all around us and yeah i don't find the virtual world as deep in a connection a visceral connection as I do the natural world. So I more than ever find myself trying to, trying to reconnect um, and trying to get off, right. you know, the smartphone control yeah, environment. All of that. Yeah. And I think too, it's, it's important too, to really, you know, especially now, uh, you know, it's like we have to kind of teach these teenagers that it's okay to disconnect. It's, yes. you know, it actually is really good for you and for your craft. And it will yes. also help to deepen it. It will help to broaden it. And, you know, it, it will help you be more creative in, in how you want to be how, in that freedom that you're speaking of, you know, and just really tapping into that. Because if you're stuck on the phone and watching everybody else and, and then, you know, they get stuck in thinking that's what they're supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. So and it's, and it's it really does And it's lurking as well that, uh, you know, when yeah. I did the chapter, the magical social media chapter in the book, you know, and I was thinking, I didn't know there was a term that explained what I noticed as one of the most, um, you know, debilitating uh, effects of social media, where you observe and you don't interact. You just keep scrolling, yeah. scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You might tap on a tap on a heart here and there or, you know, whatever, but, you know, you scroll and then you get bounced to something else and you find in, in an hour you're, you, you haven't actually created or offered anything you've just been passively right. observing and yes and, and being manipulated and you know um and i think one of the beautiful things of our craft and our practice whether we're a, like doing whether we're solitary witches or whether we're in a you know a interactive group is um what we give uh, surely our our most powerful expression of magic is what we offer rather yes. than what we okay. take or receive. Yes. So when you get mm -hmm. into this, what's called lurking, where you just scroll, 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 lurk passively, pressing a heart on something occasionally is not giving yeah. really. None of nothing's really happening. Yeah. Yet, so you, you know. become and this kind of stagnant. Violent, kind of, you know, blocked vessel of magic rather than this abundant flowing vessel that's channeling healing energy through you. Because one of the things when I wrote The Art of Witch, you know, is my manifesto a couple of years yeah. ago was that really my in my years and decades of practicing the craft i i can say that my most uh powerful moments have surely been defined by where i have been in the process i've been in, like not not coming from me in a finite either way but coming through me when i'm plugged yeah. into some kind of 
divine universal force of creation that sees me and uses me as a useful vessel. So whether I'm doing a reading for someone, uh, whether I'm reading tarot or oracle combined, or whether I'm, you know, doing spell work or ritual work, I, I always ask in my own way that the divine, um, you know, presence that I identify with, that higher power of my understanding that's outside of my finite ego and the Fiona Horn character that's kind of moving through the world right now. And, I, <laughs> and when it comes through, it's all those divine entities. It's, it's, it's the magnificence of, of creation. It's the very core of the cauldron and blasting out into the universe. When that comes through you, better than any drug, better than any high, better than yes. anything. And you realize it's not even about you. There's a witch yeah, here to help and heal. You're just like channeling. You you're channeling. Those... Yeah. So, yeah. again, I think with social media, it's so egoic. It's like you're either right there yeah. calling it out and, and counting how many right. followers and likes you have. Yeah, see me. Or you're there just lurking, 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 lurking. Nothing is magical about that. No, so no. I hope that, you know, it's... Um, as, you know, I think it's a really huge part of our craft right now, this it addressing is, the witch. Really. And how it do is, we define ourselves as witches and how do we remain free and not controlled in these, right. where we kid ourselves that this, this AI-influenced platforms are actually tools of freedom. We've got to be careful that we're not actually getting locked up. <laughs> right. No, it's so true. And I, and I like how you, you know, said in the book, too, about just being mindful you know, like just mindfully going, if you are on social media, just being mindful, being present for it and not yes, just going into that way. zombie yes. state, like you said, because it, at that point, there's no magic, nothing's happening for you there. So, and I really think too, especially with, with teens that it just also makes them more just aware of themselves and aware of their feelings and aware of how they're feeling when they're seeing these things. And you know, a lot of times they're on there and they're not, it doesn't make them happy. It doesn't, exactly. you know, it doesn't make them feel good. So yes. I think, you know, as they're, you know, at, it's great that they have this reference to kind of go to, to, to just be like, oh yeah, okay, I'm going on here mindfully, but none of this is resonating with me. None of this is making me feel good. None of this makes me feel magical. So, yes. you know, I, I really so I love that. I know that they can say, no to it that because this yes. is one of the things i really noticed i mean there's a whole section in the book about cyber bullying as well yes. and when i dip my toe into tiktok we'll talk about tiktok because it is actually the biggest platform we talk about insta having you know a million likes well we're talking billions of you know exchanges you know under the hashtag witch talk and then now it's vv talk you know vv itch talk um yes. to move away from witch talk and that's got billions it's just a it's so massive. And it's changing constantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, constantly. it's changing constantly, exactly. But it's important, um, like when I dipped my toes in, I came under the, I got cyber bullied because of a post I put up about, you know, finding nature sacred and it was misconstrued. And, and you know, the troll, for want of a better term, cat trolls came in and took it over. And, right. um, and it was so interesting to just watch this thing explode. And as a mature witch, to be able to go, I recognize this, I have no issues with, Delete and block, just straight right. away. Delete. <laughs> That's the best I'm not, thing you know, to you do. You never have to be answerable to bullies, and right. yet young people don't recognise that. And one of the saddest things is where you see people get caught caught up in trying to explain or fix or be answerable to essentially very yes. toxic individuals. And um, so I really hope that um, the book, on, the chapter on cyberbullying, is useful and helpful. For, mm -hmm. for young people and for anyone really to just remember yeah. you never I think anybody yeah for sure can be yeah and it's um, with, you know help with that yeah it definitely and is think, yeah and that's um and then I you know and in the book as well in in this team magic book as well I also talk about mental health and you know there's there's services like we have are you okay um mm -hmm. which I reckon like in the book it's because it's a southern he hemisphere initial reference but it's like just that, that thing, it's, it's okay if you notice someone struggling to ask if they're okay, do they need right. help? And, and I think that kind of, especially because we're talking about witches and baby witches, young witches, teen witches, growing witches, but also mature witches, um, it's okay to say, I don't have all the answers. I need help. Yes. 
And, right. and that I hope is a useful message that comes through in the book as well. Yeah, because I think they need to, you know, especially the teens, they need to know that. And in the age of of the internet, you can Google anything and there's an answer. Whether it's right yeah. or wrong, we're not so sure, but yeah. it's there, you know? So yeah. I do really, really think that's super important. And then the mental health part, you know, especially with everything going on, mm -hmm. um, you know? And I also love too that you kind of touch on like the, you know, just like the part with like sex and all of that sort of thing. Because that, you know, that again, too, you know, some parents won't talk to their kids about that stuff. They don't really know about that stuff. They don't have people to ask. So, yeah. you know, and I, I think that's really important, too. I think that, you know, again, it's just that owning your power, owning your body, owning, just owning how you feel, you know, yeah, and being and able to express that, whether mm -hmm. you're a teenager or a mature witch, you know, yeah, and, mature and witches have trouble with that, right? Exactly. I mean, they have yeah. trouble expressing that. I so, think, um, you know, recognizing, uh, uh, you know, in the book is that, as you mentioned, this, the, the section of Alice talk about teen sex and it's like, um, because, you know, this physical form that we're in is, uh, depending on how you relate to things as an individual, which I, I look at this and I've come increasingly to understand this Fiona Horn character form as, uh, a form, you know, right. it's not all of me. It's really amazing part of my existence um in this planet in this linear time frame on this planet in this linear time frame um but it's not everything and so i feel even more drawn to conserve it respect it love it um heal it uh give it its best opportunity to um be the best version of of it that it can be as right. i drive it around just like you know yeah. in my other job as a commercial pilot I put the right fuel in my aircraft. I don't put the wrong fuel in because otherwise something really terrible could happen. I <laughs> yeah, do my probably best not a good idea. continually educate myself on its operations and, and how it functions optimally. And I tr truly believe as I step into, I'll be, I've, I'm more than half a century on the planet now. My 55th linear year will be marked on the 24th of June in this physical form. It's, nice. um, I really also believe that we don't have to grow older as much as we can grow better at living. And yes. um, I, I think one that. of yep. the ways young people are manipulated now is to, it's part of the, the you know, you kind of need to be egoic and have an ego to, to sort of def define parameters of your life and make bound, create boundaries and things. But there's a point in, in your human years, I think where ego becomes um, a destructive force rather than a creative force in right. life. And, um, where you my my goals now as a human are okay if i'm going to be physically healthy it's so that i can be useful so that i can offer service so that i'm not a burden to others so i take super responsibility for the foods i put in the, the you know trying to you know support um you know organic farming methods or, yeah. or planting growing methods and to eat locally and and to consume less and to recycle more and um you know just kind of adapting my practices to as a witch to treading lightly on the earth more and more all the time as I can right, um, right. and that's and that giving talks part about that too the book talks about that too and even mm -hmm. conscious crystal usage you know like the, are we all aware that a lot of crystals that we love and venerate are, are mined as byproducts of fracking you know like yeah. are we aware of that maybe we should you know reduce the consumer you know demand for brand new giant or any crystals and start sharing our crystals reusing our crystals right. replanting our crystals putting them back in the earth maybe not right. where they were from but you know but also having these um the, the trust and and the relationship with our natural world that the ones that we're meant to have that you know the, the natural items whether it's crystals or certain stones or a feather falling from a bird that we do have a um an innate spiritual connection with these things and they come into our lives because they are helping us enhance like our, our practices like like talismans or conduits or magnifiers but also mm -hmm. knowing that it's not just about how much stuff you buy that's from a cool witchcraft shop as much as i don't want to undermine anyone's business in this world right right but just, again that mindfulness extending to um you know all aspects of our lives not just um you know, because we're talking so much about virtual in interaction, witchcraft, and a big part yeah. of, you know, magical social media is like putting beautiful pictures of altars or displays on our Insta feeds and 
you know, sharing that with people. And that's really beautiful and wonderful. It, I think the mindfulness can also extend to, you know, a lot of what we take for granted in our craft and going, well, what are the origins of this? And, you know, really, uh, like even something like you might think, oh, I don't want to use as many animal products, so I'm going to be vegan mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, honour the earth and honour, you know, the planet that way. Right. And yet some of the vegan products are more harmful than if you use the organic, they are. you know. <laughs> right, like right. this brand of food called Impossible Foods and it's like yes. next level bad. It's next level It is evil. really bad, yeah. It's so bad and so oh. evil. It's genetically modified soy. It's, it's like got stuff it in it is. that's not even, that like humans the have never consumed Yeah, the sodium. Because it's oh. genetically modified um, right. parts of soybean. It's And it's being marketed by these very powerful, you know, giant business kind of people that own it you know these, right these multi-billionaires that are all into oh yeah we're going to get rid of you know the climate climate issues we have you know and um by by getting everyone to eat synthetic food it's like no how about we just yeah. um missing the point here missing the point, you know <laughs> don't create more plastics and don't put them into human bodies or don't put genetically modified crazy you know soil and green right. food into us and maybe let's just um become more mindful and conscious and, and go back to if, you know, if people are going to uh, make choices to consume animals, that it's humanely farmed and sustainably farmed and kind of reduce the demand. And then what demand there is, is, is do it um, ethically and organically. Not right, the, right. the plastic world is not the solution. No, just, it's not. No, it's, really, and I was it's just scary. On holidays, like just, I actually had a holiday for two weeks and just got back. Hence, as mm -hmm. you know, because you were so lovely to let, yeah. let me go and have this little break. And I <laughs> went to this beautiful remote island in the middle of the Indian Ocean with my partner and two little tiny islands that are just specks in the oh middle gosh, of the massive amazing. Indian Ocean. And the amount of trash that was washing in, like next level, oh, just stop. layers of rubber thongs. One, one beach is called the Thong Beach because it's just all rubber thongs that have washed in and oh, next level gosh. next level trash oh, and wow if anyone hasn't watched the documentary sea spiracy it's on netflix yes. you know again this is where sometimes zoning out watching tv is useful watch this netflix documentary sea spiracy to get or be awakened to the commercial fishing methods right. that are raping the planet to a degree that's even more than what we're doing to the Amazon in, in tearing down the rainforest, the trawling on the bottom of the ocean. And then you see the vast majority of trash on beaches is not plastic straws getting up the nose of turtles at all. That's, yeah. that's kind of a little gimmick side angle. It's really the byproducts of commercial fishing, the fishing line, the mooring buoys, the nets. That's what's taking out and creating, mm. you know, most of the trash and taking out you know, in some cases, up to 95% of an ocean species, you know, like a, wow. like a fin tuna or whatever. It's it's just, you know, I'm it stuck on a rant. But all these things are things. Yeah, no. Possible. So if but everyone just chose important. not to eat fish for one day, it would make a huge difference. If everyone right. chose not to eat meat for one day, if everyone banned impossible foods because it's bloody evil, genetically modified plastic right. food that's going to mess with us more down the track and mess with our next generation which this book is for the new generation it is it's it all is. aspects of mindfulness yeah. that as witches we could maybe and just being aware you know being and aware, being aware. Yeah. and like you said that giving because that is a part you know of being a witch and you know i mean i've been a you know i guess active witch since i was 14 but like you said you're born a witch you know and you just knew you know, you're, you're, you're doing, you know, I'd be roaming around in the woods looking for fairies and they would, you know, we'd be like, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? There's fairies out here. And they think I'm nuts, but I'm like, whatever. And it's, then, not a, it's not a fantasy more for thing. Me. I mean, it's marketed <laughs> as fantasy. Books are written it about is. it like fantasy. The fairy, the fairy element of life, however you identify with that nature spirit, if for want of a better way of describing it is, um, yeah. is your business. And I was the same, you know, and, um, right. You know, I think that that's, uh, I think that's what's really beautiful about it. And then you can even look, I, I'm adopted. So I, I look into my physical Fiona form, biological yeah. background, being Hungarian and German. And I can trace back to the Teutonic, you know, tribes of Northern right. Europe. And that's my bloodline, along with how, how you know, cross-pollinated all our blood bloodlines are now. Um, but I can kind of see where, why it would have made sense to me that that idea of, um, 
of the natural world that I was intrinsically connected with it and found an, a sense of empowerment and acknowledgement as, it, as, as an individual walking this planet in it, it, it all kind of made sense, you know, why I was right. drawn to witchcraft specifically, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So like when, when did you feel like the, your first real magical moment? Like when were you like, whoa, okay, this is real? You know, it's funny because I would, I would say like, um, you know, I could go, oh, I could remember moments when I was five and moments when I was seven and moments when I was 13 and these are specific mm -hmm. events. But I'd like to offer that even as recently as last week, I had one of those aha moments, wow, this is real. Right. And I, I would like to actually offer that and, and, and everyone who's watching that. so many, so many wonderful people um, jumping on and oh, thank you for sharing the link. Yes, so everybody talk. saying yes. hello and Amber's yeah, hooking me I up with all the links. Doing this. Yeah, it's, yes. thank you for being here as, as Jen and I get lost in our deep conversation. <laughs> but, uh, but no, the... Um, but yeah, even just as recently as last week, and sometimes it's it's just noticing the serendipity of things, like all the, right. the patterns of things, and just understanding that you're exactly where you're meant to be. And I'll, I'll offer this: this is an example of what it's like to be a witch and have a magical moment where I'm standing on a really remote beach with my partner on a last mm -hmm. week on an island in the middle of the Indian Ocean, you know, one of the most remote places in the world that you can stand. Wow. I'm standing there. And a lady walks along. She's part of a group. There's a, you know, there's a few people on this island and she walks mm -hmm. along with a, a big bag and she's collecting trash like all of us did. We'd pick up three for the sea. You're always picking up a bit of trash off the beach and they right. have quite a good recycling program on this island. All this trash that's coming in is predominantly from Asia and from flo floating really? plastic islands where it all just ends up washed in on the beach and the yeah. currents. Anyway, so she notices a blue cat, a blue plastic cat out in the water it's in a wave and she said there's a blue plastic cat i'd like to get that cat and we notice and i'm thinking she means a hat cat but she means a blue yeah. plastic bottle cat okay. and i see a flash of blue for a moment she doesn't get it and ultimately she walks away and then the next day it's our final day and we're, we've gone to another part of the island david and i and we're standing on the edge of a limestone cliff and there's a big white booby bird there nesting and there's just the ocean and on the rock in front of me is a single blue cap, plastic oh, cap, wow. sitting on top of the rock. So what wow. did I do with that cap? I took the cap. And in that moment, I understood that the higher power of my understanding, the, the, the core of divine essence, was allowing me to know that, that I have a reason and a role in everything. The fact that I'm here is enough. What I do with the opportunity is my determining. And as a witch, it was just a reminder to remember that you know it doesn't come from us it comes through us but it needs yes. us to know itself and to express yes. the it being that divine core of creation fucking life you know it's right right how much more no, fucking magical does anything need to be you know right. life it all of it and so i took the blue cap now did i throw the blue cap out no it's on my altar over yeah, there. I was gonna say I would you know? that blue cap. <laughs> so I mean, isn't that funny? But how now? Some people I might you know, might just find that a you know a, a an amusing bit of insanity and, and waste of time. However, as a practicing witch, I found that to be one of the most magical moments of my life at this point. Right. Fifty-five linear years coming up to it on the planet. That was one of my most magical moments in life. That's fantastic. I love that, just and like I that. love like like you said, it wasn't something that. You know, of course, we can go back to when we were younger and be like, oh, yeah, this mom. But no, like, you know, that just proves that being a witch, being mindful, being open, being receiving, yes. you know, these things can just, they come to you. And, you know, if you trusting, weren't practicing, what comes to yeah, you. yeah, yeah, and just putting it out. And if you weren't trusting, if you weren't putting it out there, you know, like, you just want to walk past it and probably wouldn't have thought anything about it. But you saw that and you saw the meaning of that. And I think by, you know, having that practice, it's just so important. And I, I would love that too, for, for the younger kids, you know, the kids coming into it too, mm -hmm. they're like, the, this is what it's about. You know, it's not about, like you said, all the crystals you have. It's not about all the tarot decks you have. It's that, it's those it's good that. moments, a bottle cap, like that's what it's yeah, about. I you know, know. And, like, and how it's imbued it. with magic. And I think even, you know, I talk about it in, um, 
like in Art of Witch in the manifesto, there's a big section about sobriety. And, you know, I used to think when I was phys in physically younger linear years that I needed a muse, that I needed to drink to be magical or I needed to take some drugs to be magical. I needed to mm -hmm. go into a plant medicine retreat to be magical. And increasingly as a sober witch, uh, uh, now coming up on nine years, it's... Uh, oh, I've actually awesome. found Congratulations. Well, I thank you for saying that. And at the same time, the program, I mean, I kind of, again, it's all just been a learning experience of realizing yeah. it's not about me. It's not at my willpower ran out 25 million years ago. I've drunk ocean <laughs> power, I've taken more drugs than I, I mean, whatever. It's all whatever. Yeah. But it's like what I learned as a sober witch is that the these really deep, where you get that massive rush and everything you're looking for when you try to put a substance into yourself to get that shift can happen. By looking at a blue bottle cap on a rock right. and just going, right now. if that you know, doesn't sum it up, I don't you, know what just your whole physical form dissolves and you realize everything's energy and everything's interconnected. And that's the most powerful, like, you know, transcendental experience in that moment. Another thing I did last week was, was dive, you know, to, seven, uh, to well, 75, 80, it was actually 80, 90 feet. Um, oh, normally God. I dive deeper than that free diving, mm -hmm. holding my breath, you know, and I find free diving again, you know, we talk about things a witch can be and do. It's not all about like just what you're doing either on bloody social media on a, through a smartphone, but you know, right. I love exploring this physical form and I've taken up free diving and um, you know, I dive to a hundred feet and I'm wow. I feel like I'm returning to the womb. I have these experiences of where it reminds me, oh, this is what it was like in the womb. When I look down into that mm. fathomless blue and I mother ocean, as I would use that, those English words to yeah. determine this presence of, of the divine manifesting as the ocean, she says, come to me, let me hold you. And I just go, <sighs> big breath. And I go to her and I'm held. Wow. Her, and I feel like I'm in the womb, you know, and I'll be down there for a couple of minutes just, you know, in, held and then ascending up into the light. All these things become spiritual if we allow them to be. Um, Absolutely. I guess as a, as a witch now of all these years, I find my witchcraft is just, it's all that too. It's yeah. all of it. It's everything. It doesn't mean everyone has to do it this way, but I'm someone that's here with 14 books published and I'm sharing, this is how I live my life as a witch, you know. And, um, right. And that, we are all very grateful that you are. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm just, well, you know, and, and again, you know, I'm grateful that you offer what you offer as you create a, a portal and an environment to bring people together, all these amazing people that are joining and, and sharing yes. notes on it. You know, it's like how beautiful that in this, this, this moment of this speck of time, we are right. connected in this way, you know, and it's always yeah. something to be grateful for. And I'd love to right. offer, um, you know, when I, with, with all my, with my recent books, whether it's, you know, Teen Magic, The Art of Witch, or even my autobiography that came out, The Naked Witch, that came out a couple of years too, ago too, um, I talk just about how I've lived as a witch now um, for these 55 years and how um, your craft can keep growing and evolving. And as much or as little as you choose, it's your choice, you know. And I just think as witches, if we can fiercely protect our choice, our right to have a choice, in all things, then that's a really magical way to live as well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and that is like choice. And I, and I do feel again, like that, just extending that, giving that, you know, showing others that, yeah, you do have choices. You don't have to do the mainstream, you know, and, and, you know, obviously, as you'd see, I have lots of tattoos, you know, pink hair or whatever. And, you know, for me, that has always been something very important is my choices and how I live. Um, I have four boys, you know, so I live in, you know, upstate New York in the mountains and it's very conservative, you know, and I don't fit in here, you know, and, but that's, you know, I really don't care, honestly, but you know, it's, it's one of those things that also for me, just even teaching my kids, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, they accept everyone and they're all musicians. So <laughs> we are artsy fartsy all over the place here. And, you know, it's, it's awesome to me that, you know, they will go and talk to anyone, you know, yeah. covered in tattoos, piercings, or, you know, just anyone, they'll just go talk to them. They, they don't see that, you know, and that was something so important for me to share with them. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and it's really kind of cool because two of them have steady girlfriends. 
And mm -hmm. both of them, they're about 15 years old. I think they're both 15. And they are, um, they're very witchy. So it's really cool for me because yes. I'm like, yay! <laughs> my they, oldest son, he's that magic brewing, yeah. Right. And my oldest son, he's 26. He's very witchy. He's my one. You know, I taught him tarot. He does tarot. He does rituals. He does all the things. And some of my other kids dabble, but I love that the girlfriends are into it. So I actually got them both a copy of your book. Oh, thank um, you. To give to them because, you know, I'm talking to them and one of them, you know, she is on TikTok all the time and she mm. is reading and all these things. And I'm like, okay, well, it's not completely wrong, but let me give you this, you know, view on Some it. Guidance. It's, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and yeah. I love that I can give them, you know, this book. Yeah, I'm going to, you know, I give them the book and I'm like, here, this, when you have a question, if you know, ask me, but you can also look and see. And I love that you have all these little spells in it too. Because, you know, baby witches, they, they, they love it. Enjoy. Yeah, they love the little, they love the little, like, she's always talking to me about spells and all of that, and she loves it. And I have to say, like, right here, I have it bookmarked. So there's this oh, one, the freezer yeah. spell. Yeah. That is my all-time favorite spell that I've been doing forever. And, <laughs> and as I was reading through, I saw it was in here. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's really, you know I love one thing that really hit me that as you were talking um, and I feel like I need to tell you this or, or share it mm -hmm. with everyone when you said you live in a mountain town it's remote and you're very different you're, you and your family are very different and you don't fit in because it's very conservative I had this big rush of like something I needed to tell you which you'll probably know but I just want to affirm it and it was like multifaceted. I'm, I'm clearing out all the messages that came through. It it said like nature, for want of a better N word, English word to describe, she said to me to tell you that you're meant to be there because she needs, like Phyllis Curot, who's an amazing witch author, incredible, she coined a phrase recently, the world needs her witches. And every time you look at Phyllis Curot's posts and things she's always saying the world needs her witches now more than ever okay and then and it's true because our divine essence spirit nature mother all of it needs us to to be it's it's like we're where if we can adore her the way we do as witches then she is being healed and being given the voice she needs through our Path, yes. on our path, mm -hmm. okay there's many right. paths and they're all important and essential i could say another story about that but she was saying to me that where you live and where you are is necessary because she needs to be adored by you in that way there and anywhere that any human or family or people or group or us humans this species on this biosphere this expression of life for better for worse here we are wherever we are that we are a bit different or don't fit in we are an essential plug in for her right. in that environment does that make sense yes so no absolutely breeding, the fact that you're right. breeding there like like even if we took, thought of an indigenous plant that's flourishing pr prolifically in its healthy right. environment but around it is all other crap that doesn't really harmoniously live there but you're yeah. there harmoniously living that's essential and that's enough you know right and um i think for any human watching who feels displaced and on their own, remember, you're never on your own. The mother wants you where you are because the world needs her witches to be to be kind of channeling, mm -hmm. honouring, adoring, revering and, and expressing now in these extraordinary times, you know. Right, um, right. It's like you, now you, you are ever. where you're supposed to be, you know. Exactly, yeah. So when you right. don't fit in, I love good. It. When you don't fit in, good. Like that's yeah. necessary there. You know, yeah. and that's um, I love that, our, yeah. our, 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 and this even links to, you know, stuff that's in the book. Your greatest sense of belonging doesn't come from what other humans are telling you to do or be like. Mm -hmm. um, there's always, in, there's a whole section in here about respecting your elders, learning, yes. honoring your parents, caretakers, guidance, gu guide, counselors. You know, there's a whole section about how to honor and respect them, but also how to be yourself. And, right. you know, your, your ultimate sense of belonging doesn't come from, you know, fitting into some cool group or, or being, you know, told you have to be a certain way um, when it's the greatest sense of belonging comes when you feel that you can be your authentic self and be plugged into that divine sense of reverence for what it is to be human. 
and I'm just talking right. about witches, but, you know, these aspects of learning and teaching are not exclusive to witchcraft, but it's important. They're still part it of is, It craft, is, it is. And I think it's important, too, that to know and, like, for others to know that are just starting on the path that you can do both. You can respect your elders. You can respect and have that respect, but you can still be yourself. Exactly. You know, it doesn't need yes. to be one way or the other. And mm -hmm. I feel that, you know, and... I do feel that it's hard even, you know, and that kind of even goes back to, you know, the whole male, female aspect of things. You know, there mm -hmm. may have been, you know, there may be tons, of, there probably are tons of teen witches out there who are non-binary, who don't, yeah. you know, who don't identify with any of that. And they mm -hmm. may have thought at some point, all right, well, maybe I can't be a witch because I, that, I don't, you know, that doesn't flow mm -hmm. for me. That doesn't resonate with me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, like by bringing that up and you talking about it and the, you know, in the book, just that, no, everybody can do it. There's these aspects. And again, I think that goes back to, you know, respect your elders, res you know, this is how they did it. This is why mm -hmm. they did it. And I think a lot of times when you know the why, it also yeah. makes sense. You know what I yeah. mean? It's, you know, mm -hmm. okay, this is why they did that. And then you just make it your own, you know? Exactly, and I know yeah. that's, that's a lot. When I, when I'm, you know, teaching even with my kids or, you know, whoever, it's just, yeah, you know, you read, you read, you read, you just get all the information, you soak it all up. Then you create your practice out of that. Yes. You know, yeah. and that is what makes it yours. That's what makes it authentic and, you know, and it, and beautiful, you know, and it, and it really and an is something. Yeah. And yeah. And I think that's so important. A modern witch. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I, you know, again, these are all our individual opinions in it to a degree. I, I've learned that the, the modern witch is anchored in all those things you just described, you know, educate, learn, um, you know, be mindful, be conscious, make an effort, you know, and then right. form, forge your path, you know, and it's right. a, it's a practice and it continues. It's a craft, which craft craft is right on doing shit, you know, like, yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's going it to always ends. change. It never ends. It's not, yeah. the path is not a destination. It's a journey. And that's, it is. you know, that's Absolutely. what I really enjoy about, about modern witchcraft and how it just keeps growing and changing and evolving in my personal life. Um, and then seeing it, you know, having been in the public eye in varying degrees over the last 20, 30 years and having the opportunity to interact with witches all around the world um, and see how it's growing and evolving. You know, that's, right. I think, really, really exciting. It is really exciting, too. And just, you know, and it's, it's for me, I love, you know, um, talking to, like, baby witches, new witches, and the questions that they have. Because mm. sometimes they bring up some questions that I'm like, I don't know, you know, <laughs> but mm. I want to know about this. And, you know, and again, like you were saying, too, it's okay to not know everything, you know, yes. that if you, if you know, and I always, you know, I always said, I say this all the time is like, the minute you say, you know, everything is when you know nothing. Right? Oh yeah. The more, you know, you know? the more you realize so, you don't know, you know, that's right. That's life, and it's like, you know? oh, you know, so it's so yeah. important too. So, and then it's like, then, you know what, we're fine out together. And yeah. then there you go. And I love yeah. that. I love discovering that and finding it and looking through others eyes and just their take on things too, you know, it, it's just, it's so eye opening and, you know, talk, like you said, talking to other witches and stuff and just getting their views on it or how they even do things mm. like in their ritual, in their every day, mm. like, you know, well, this is how I, you know, cleanse a deck. This is how I collect moon water. And, mm. you know, maybe something I never even thought of, but I'm like, that's pretty freaking cool. I'm going to do that now. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> you know, well, like, so you a really good point as well, which is like, um, it reminds me of when when I was getting started, like, as I, I was like, okay, I'm like, now I'm what, 18 or 19 years old, young, whatever. And I'm thinking I want to practice this more. I'm reading a lot and scared to do something, you know, scared I'll do it wrong or scared it's kind of silly or scared it doesn't really mean anything. And you're still more focused on the doing rather than the being. And I think just simple things, um, like even one of the things I really like about, um, you know, having this this uh, smartphones and our whole, you know, virtual world of witchcraft is there's a lot of great videos of people just doing ritual. And you can, and younger people particularly can know, well, it's okay. If I light a candle and I sprinkle a circle of salt or I draw a sigil or I hold something in the moonlight or I hold something to my heart or I, you know, I do, do this, this and this and mix it up this way and burn it, then 
that's actually I, I have validation that all these steps mm -hmm. are appropriate and then right. you know then you've got that and then because I just remember when there were no videos of it and you were just reading about it and trying to imagine what it looked like yeah you know, if it was right or wrong or this or that and now you can see these often people have created these very beautiful demonstrate de demonstrative like videos or guides and you're like great you know this is so different to when I started out and you had to hunt through a second-hand bookstore and hope to find something about and the hope, ancient yeah, or the library or something that they didn't like, have it, you know, yeah I yeah but to the it's library really helpful. And get something <laughs> yeah it, it's really helpful as a validation to go okay so I can get started and I can actually do this stuff and um, I think that's a right. really powerful message for young people now too and where our hyper interconnected interconnected world is actually very useful you know no definitely I agree yeah. I definitely agree yeah absolutely well, in linear years Jen I just looked at the physical time here on the west coast of Australia where I am and I might have to start wrapping it up with you my love and, and yes all the no I just realized you. that too <laughs> I know especially because we started late too I'm sorry about that yeah. Yeah, no so oh my gosh just... no I just I looked at it too I was like oh okay because I feel like we could just keep going <laughs> <laughs> which is I'm so excited about that but okay, well, before we go ahead and wrap it up, do you have any other projects that are coming up that you can share with us? Well, I'd, I'd really, really love to, I, I touched on it before, and I'd just really love to, again, um, talk, just remind everyone that my band, Sea Witch, is starting to get active, and this, our music's going to be available internationally on all digital platforms from the 26th of June. Um, but oh, if you go to our Insta page, which is at Sea Witch, the band, um, you'll see, start to see a lot of stuff in music and all the lyrics, as I was saying, like we're actually calling the album, we're pretty sure we're going to call it Well of Spells, which because oh, wow. every song is a spell. So oh, a lot, that's of, awesome. a lot of the stuff is in this book that's ended up in this music. Um, it's heavy, heavy, deep rock, you know, um, back to my core and then some. Um, but yeah, I really hope that people will enjoy visiting Sea Witch, the band, and exploring yeah. our journey and uh, as witches around the world I hope that the music offers you know um inspiring and empowering um you know energy uh to everyone who who enjoys hopefully what they would consider great music um but also yeah. specifically for witches I wrote this for witches we will yeah we, we will need recognize. more witchy music <laughs> yeah it's our music <laughs> with our language with our our um our vision in it, you know, and our, our touchstones it. in it. And I hope the witches around the world will, will really enjoy it for that yes. reason. No, like I said, <laughs> I was, I, I was looking around a little bit and I think it's awesome. I'm all into that. So I look forward to it. So I'm thanking um, everyone here well, too. Ancient Voices yes. has just put the band up there for, and I think yes, the Amber, yep. has been putting up some links that are really helpful too. Yeah. So. Amber's helping me out. So yeah, it's all in you. there. Yeah. Thanks Amber. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on and hanging out with me. I am, it's been so wonderful and I love it. And I love talking to thank other witches. You. It makes me so happy. <laughs> so you well, have thank you. I love, I love that you're over there in the mountains and I'm over here on the west yes. coast of Australia. And we're literally on the agree. opposite side we of the are. world with exactly 12 hours difference. So I love it. It is. And That's so, it is. Thank it's you so for amazing. Having me. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. You have a fantastic day. Thank you. You too. And thanks. All right. to, well, you have a lovely evening. And thanks to everyone who yes. joined us as well. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.